Hello chemists and welcome to Bales Chemistry. In this episode we're going to be introducing a new specification section which is 1.12 acids and bases and it all appears on paper one of your final exams. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel make sure you do so you can find out about my new videos released each week. Acids and bases at A-level chemistry start with these two scientists, Bronsted and Lowry. Both independently developed the definitions that we use most commonly for acids and bases at A-level chemistry. They define the Bronsted and Lowry acid as a chemical species which can donate a proton and a Bronsted and Lowry base as a chemical species which can accept a proton. This is how you'll have talked about acids and bases through your first year of A-level and at GCSE. All that's changed is the name that we give them, and this is to separate them from other types of acids and bases which you'll meet in further study. When we talk about H plus protons and hydrogen ions, we all mean the same thing. It's just a hydrogen atom which is missing an electron. When we talk and write about generic acids and base reactions, we often use HA to represent an acid, which splits apart to form H plus and A minus. If we consider it in a solution of water, then we can sometimes represent that H plus as H3O plus, as that proton would have attached to the water molecule. We can also use B to represent a generic base, although this is less common at A level. In this case, we can show B gaining a proton from water to form BH plus and OH minus. The main concentrations that we're interested in is that of hydrogen ions or protons, as this directly links to the pH of a solution. We can show concentration using the square brackets around the H plus ion. If we increase the concentration of H plus, we decrease the pH. And if we decrease the concentration of H plus, we increase the pH. You may have already come across the idea that acids dissociate or ionize when they're in solutions. This means they split apart forming solutions of H plus and A minus. With a strong acid like hydrochloric acid, it completely dissociates in water. Weak acids only partially dissociate in water, and they form an equilibrium between the complete acid molecule HA and the dissociated ions H plus and A minus. This equilibrium often lies heavily to the left, which means the concentration of H plus is much less than the concentration of the acid solution. As we've just seen, weak acids only partially dissociate, and when they do, they form an equilibrium. This is exactly like the equilibriums we looked at in the first year studies. But because we're looking at the equilibrium for acid dissociation, we change that Kc now to Ka. If the value of Ka is higher, then the equilibrium lies further towards the right. The acid is more dissociated and there is a greater concentration of hydrogen ions. If the value of Ka is lower, then the equilibrium lies further to the left. The acid is less dissociated and the concentration of hydrogen ions is also lower. If we consider bases, bases also dissociate. Some bases, such as metal hydroxides, dissociate first before they accept protons. Here we've used M to represent the metal ion. And then we can see examples of the common strong bases sodium hydroxide and potassium hydroxide. Other bases, weaker bases such as ammonia, don't need to dissociate before they accept a proton. In the case of ammonia, it gains the proton and forms the ammonium ion, NH4+. Acids donate protons to bases in chemical reactions. This leads to a neutralization process. And we've already looked at lots of different reactions where this takes place in our studies. But here are a few examples of where protons move to be bonded to the base. That's it for this episode of Bales Chemistry. If you've enjoyed it and found it useful, please hit the like below. If you want to look at more of our acids and base videos, there's a link on the screen. And thank you for taking the time to watch this episode.